Samsung The Frame for 2022. This is the 43 inch model. I'm going to assemble it, put it on its stand, which is the two feet. I'm not going to wall mount it today. If you look below in the description, there's a link there for the 32 inch The Frame. It's exactly the same for the wall mounting. The wall mount's included with the template as well. We'll also put other timestamps in there to follow. So have a look, there'll be measurements, dimensions, and other key moments. Top of the box, I can just see the remote control and instruction book pack, quick setup guide, and those two feet there as well. Remote control and instruction book pack, quick setup guide, and the two feet. Pulling out. One connect box. That is the TV from the front and the side. And that is a quick back shot there for you as well. Remote control instruction and accessories pack because I'm assuming the wall mount kit is in there. So that is literally the wall mount kit. There's a card going to appear somewhere. If you want the full instructions how to wall mount, I did it on the 32. It's exactly the same procedure. Have a look at that. It should be bookmarked there so you don't have to look at the whole video. And that'll teach you how to wall mount, but basically two bits screwed to the back of the TV, plates on the wall, and it plops on. Also allows you to rock to get it level. There's a template in here to help you mark the wall up as well, although I usually measure where the brackets are and where I want the top of the TV to do it that way, but it's up to you. Have a look at the video if you're stuck. 5 meter one connect lead as well to go with the one connect box. Some stickers there, not sure what they're for. Could be for sticking the template up, I'm not sure, I'll have a look. That is the template there. You see your edges of your TV, so you can put your corners up, mark where you want the brackets to be. It does give you a wall mount instruction guide as well can fold out and it gives you the mounting for it either being horizontal or vertical so you could do portrait displays in art mode if you wanted it vertical most people I think will use it horizontal so they can watch TV as well but that is an instruction book included for wall mounting quick guide to the smart remote that comes with a frame TV looks pretty much like the normal smart one Hmm. We'll soon see when we look at the remotes. Quick setup guides, quick list of inputs on that one connect box and included accessories. Too easy to lay it on a large flat surface while you're working on it. Surface larger than the TV so there's no pressure on the screen. How to install the pedestal feet if you're going for the feet. Again, like some of the QLED models, the Q60 or the BU8000, it's got this switch you can flick. It'll increase the height at the bottom of the TV by an inch, so if you've got a soundbar in front, it gives you more room for the soundbar. Two of you to lift it up wherever you're placing it. Connecting your One Connect lead to the back of the TV. Securing the One Connect lead to the back of the TV. Connecting it to the One Connect box, turning it on. Key dimensions for the 43 and 50 inch model. And a bit there about the visa mounting, so you can put it on a standard wall mount as well if you don't want it on the no gap or slim fit, whatever they're terming it as this year. You can use the normal visa mount, so it gives you the dimensions there 200 square and the length of the bolts required. Back to those remaining accessories figure eight mains lead, which we attach to the one connect box. So it gives you a pack of wall mounting screws here. Suitable maybe for a brick wall. If you've got a plasterboard with breeze block behind, I'd use concrete screws or something. Wouldn't trust those so much going into a dot and dab wall, but use the correct fittings anyway, that's all I'll say. All relevant fittings. Some bits there as well. Let's have a quick look in the baggie. We've got a part there, self-adhesive to the back of the TV to help you secure the lead. This part pins into the back to secure the one connect connector in. So we've got that end that goes through into the TV so we can't accidentally yank it. 
and break the connector on here because that's an expensive lead if you have to replace it. Also, if you are working with this, no sharp bends. That's why it gives you this radius piece here, which is also self-adhesive. We need to make a corner bend. It gives you the correct radius for that cable, so you're not gonna break it, and it goes in like so. Okay, the standard remote, which is not the standard remote on the other frame TVs with the picture button. It's just the same as the others. We'll get close-ups. New smart remote for 2022 for the frame TV in white, power on and off. That takes you to a virtual keyboard settings and the colored buttons, voice command button, multi view button, cursor arrows left, right, up, down and enter, press play and pause, you get rewind and fast forward or skip backwards and forwards, return button, home button, volume rocks up and down and in for mute, channels rock up and down and in for guide, Netflix, Samsung TV Plus, Prime and Disney Plus. Flip it over and we've got that solar cell on the back to keep it charged or to top up the charge. If the battery runs out completely, I'll just remove that tab anyway. USB type C socket there, so plug your normal phone charger into there and it will charge it up. Now looking at the standard remote, so we've got power on and off at the top, source button, channel numbers, teletext, not in the UK, pre-channel to the previous channel, volume up and down, channels up and down, mute button, channel list, quick access, Netflix, Prime, Samsung TV Plus, and Disney Plus. Cursor arrows up, down, left, right, and enter. Got the home button there as well. Return, let's go back step by step. Exit all the way out, the colored buttons for what they refer to, depending on apps and media playback. Shortcut to the settings, info for the info bar, audio description and subtitles there. Play, stop, pause, forward and rewind for apps and media playback as well. Flip it over, push down there and slide away. Treble A batteries into the back. That's the One Connect box to go with this year's frame TV, pretty much the same as last year's and previous year QLED TVs. And while we're looking at it, we may as well do the connections. Okay, we've got an external link there, mains input, satellite and terrestrial antenna input, common interface slot or CI card slot reader, digital optical audio out, LAN or wired internet, HDMI is one, two, three, and four. HDMI free is enhanced audio return channel. And that is where our one connect lead goes into. With my one connect lead, just take the cap off the top. Simply just plugs into there, like so. And then the other end goes to the TV. So handy thing with these boxes, connect your mains or your HDMI devices and aerial to this box, only lead to the TV is this fin cable here and that end to the TV. So it does make it nice and convenient for wall mounting. I've got the box stood vertical now, just so we can see, we've also got five volt half amp USB socket and a five volt one amp USB socket. On the other side, nothing there, just some vents to help radiate the heat. Onto the feet, they are the supplied pedestal feet with this year's model. You can see here we've got this switch, so if you want to increase the height for a soundbar in front of the TV, we flick the switch that way. That's now going to make it an inch more off the table, the height to the bottom of the TV, to leave a good size gap for a soundbar. No soundbar, flick the switch down and it keeps it nice and low to the table. I've now got the TV laid flat. Got that channel there for the foot to slide into. So I can just place it into, there's a groove there somewhere, he says. That's it. Same for this side. Give it a wiggle and we're pretty much in. Now, the only thing we can see on the back of the TV is the Visa mount. So M8, if we're doing the standard mount, that out of the way. We can then see our mounts for our slim fit wall mount. So obviously if we were doing the horizontal wall mount it's those two points there. Put our fixings on, our wall mount fixings on. If we we're doing vertical it's these two here. And the only other thing we can see is where our one connect lead attaches. So that is the one connect lead. 
TV marked there should be facing out towards us. And we just push it gently in and it clicks. Then got that securing clip that I've lost somewhere. Here it is. Also got an arrow facing up, so we assume it's pointing upwards and it pushes in just to secure that cable in there. If we want to release it, pull that out. Two tabs here to squeeze. And just give it a gentle wiggle and it's out again. Onto the dimensions. I'm also gonna get the one connect box dimension straight after, because some people do ask for that, so I'll do it anyway. Obviously, 43 inch model. Critical one, if it is on the feet, is the feet width which in this case is 67 and a half centimeters, maybe just over, or 26 and three quarter inches. Again, you can fit a universal pedestal stand using the visa mount on the back. I'll put a card up there somewhere if you do want a universal central base to fit your furniture. Width for the TV, 97 centimeters or 38 and a quarter inches. Height of it with a switch in that current position is about 32 millimeters. Flick the switch, it'll be 55 millimeters or it's standing at one and a quarter inches. And again, flick that switch two and a quarter inches. Okay, looking at it from the back, the depth for those feet could be important. So 19 and a half centimeters or seven and three quarter inches. Height from the bottom of the TV to the first visa mount hole is 16 and a half centimeters. That's there to the center of that first hole if it helps. Okay. Dimensions for the one connect box, the width, just under 35 centimeters. If I want to be precise, 347, 348 millimeters maybe just under 13 and three quarter inches. The thickness or the height of the box, six and a half centimeters or two and a half inches. Depth wise, the depth of the box is 13 and a half centimeters or just over five and a quarter inches, maybe just under five and a half inches. If I put the plug into the back, which you have to put the plug in anyway and get the depth, I'd say, because we've got to give that lead a bit of a sweeping bend, we can't bend it too sharply. Just under 23 centimetres or nine inches. Just a quick insert of an example of a frame TV on the wall. That's a 55 inch version. It does have the magnetic frame on. I think I've got the bits in the back of there. You can see it just clips around the edge, held on by magnets. So I could change that if I get bored of the dark wood or whatever color I've picked. I can pick a new one and simply it just magnets itself back to it and we're done. Again, I'll put a link somewhere and you can have a look at the list of colours available, list of different colours and wood grains and whatever else. Okay, got my one connect box now wired with aerial, internet and mains. I'm going to turn the TV on. Press a button on the smart remote, it will start pairing. All paired. Tells us there are two simple options to connect. You can go smartphone, it will transfer your Wi-Fi and account details to the TV. I'm going to go remote control step by step. Okay. Pop in a pin for setting up later on. Okay. Connect any devices, turn them on. L your HDMI devices, turn them all on. The TV should recognize them. Terrestrial and digital for my source. Wide internet. No 
agree to all and OK. There probably will be an update, in which case I should pause the video, come back when it's completed. Right, update's now completed, it's rebooting itself. You can't expect your TV, any TV, to be sluggish immediately afterwards because it's probably installing in the backgrounds and updating the apps as well. So we'll bear with it. Now, it's now taking us to this screen. You can subscribe monthly at 3 99 or go for an annual plan of 39.90 in the UK to give you unlimited access to art and so on. If you don't go for that, you can use your own art uploads. You can use the SmartThings app to upload your own images and pictures. You can either make collages and pictures of yourself and your family, or pets and whatever, or get your own artwork and upload it that way. I'm going to say later as we're in store. And there is some free content and demo content. So obviously to download that, you will need to sign in or create a Samsung account as well. Pop your postcode in for regional programming. So quick summary there, it's tuned in the channels in the background while doing the software update and we've got that wired network. Select your voice command service, you can have Bixby, Alexa or Google. And again, use your phone, PC, whatever to link your Amazon Prime account. Quick summary of the home screen there and a few things you can quickly add. So there, it's on about the adaptive picture and voice. Put that on, it should act to optimise the sound and the picture to the content you're watching. It says try the remote, see if it works. So if I press the power button, it should go there to the art mode. Click next. Okay, quick message at the top right about brightness optimization. So it has an auto brightness sensor, it will alter the brightness of the TV depending on the ambient lighting in the room. Now I've come up with my region selection for my aerial, which is England, and it is pointed at Yorkshire, and Leeds, close. Way to change the law. So okay, so straight onto free view there. Just going to try the retail demo before I adjust any settings. This would be safe. The employers will always have to. Settings down to all settings. Turn down quasi quartan in the background. Down to general. System manager. A third day of strike action is planned for Saturday. And while there have been further talks today, four zeros or whatever pin you've selected. The RMT has been on to retail mode. If an agreement isn't reached, Katie Austin beats the Okay. We're here to speak about both the rail.
cool. Pretty, pretty cool. So, back to yeah, home mode. But it was the plan his government's okay. drawn up to send asylum seekers from the UK here that's attracted attention. Prince Charles reportedly thinks that policy needs work, having his claims courted appalling. In Rwanda himself, representing the Queen, he's due to meet the Prime Minister okay, tomorrow. Okay, quickly going to go to the settings while I'm here. So... Let's have a look at the start screen. I usually turn off multi view, don't like it. If I'm casting YouTube or screen mirroring my phone, I want to see it full screen, not side by side with TV or whatever in the background. You can see we've got that auto run multi view when rotating. Did see you can get a rotating bracket or stand on that demo, which looked pretty cool. So you can have it either portrait or landscape just by spinning it around. Also there, Auto run last app, that's fine, and start with the smart hub home. That's up to you. So when you turn it on, you can have it with that smart hub. Turn it off, it'll just start up straight onto TV or whatever you were last watching. Out of there, power and energy saving, brightness optimization. I'm going to turn off for the demo. Usually I'd leave that on because it will adjust the brightness depending on the ambient light in the room. Motion lighting, I'm turning off because it's trying to reduce bits of brightness to save power, but it will sacrifice the picture to do so. Also, auto power off, I usually turn off because if you don't press a button for so long, it'll think you've gone out and turn the TV off. Okay, I'm leaving it on standard picture mode for the demo as well. I'm just going to come out of there. Oh, back to live TV. Turn the sound up so we can hear and get a bit of TV so some content. Relief, but perhaps dodging her face to face row with the palace. But significant questions remain not just about his asylum policy, but what this gathering of leaders will achieve as the world watches. Alex Forsyth, BBC News, Kigali. Well, we can go back to our guests now to speak about the rail strikes and the British Airways strikes. Alan, where are you now? Thank you. Take care. That's Andrew Teacher there, who's the founder at Blackstock Consulting, and formerly a spokesman for BAA Heathrow. Well, let's have a look at the weather forecast now with Thomas. Hello. The warm spell of weather is slowly coming to an end, and in fact, it's already been quite a fresh day for many of us today, uh, with some heavy showers, the odd crack of thunder, and I think more of that to come tomorrow. Although in eastern parts of the country, still some of that warmth left, I think, through tomorrow afternoon. So here's the forecast for tonight. Generally dry, but showers scattered around here and there. A warm night, 16 degrees will okay. be the early morning <clears> temperature <throat> in Liverpool. I'm going to press this standby button to let it go into the art mode, see what's displayed. So that is the preset art mode on there. That's what it looks like as a painting. Obviously you can select different artwork. If I wanted to turn it off all the way, I'd hold the power button down for three seconds. Like so. And that is it off. To turn it back on, one press on the power button. back on. Back on as artwork, press the power button again. And we're back to TV. If you want to change the settings on the art mode, go to the home button. And if we go to the left, we've got the menu below. We can go up to art. There we go. And we've got featured artworks there. So we'll try a black and white one. That looks pretty cool. I don't know how well the camera displays it there, but it looks good to me. I'll just turn my change my brightness. So nice looking bit of artwork there. It does look like a painting. It's got that sort of matte finish as the demo said. So we're not getting reflections on the screen and it should look more like a print or a canvas. Press the back button, I'll just come out of there. Try a couple more. Many years to 
join and there's no guarantee try some that are like painting style Obviously it's telling me to sign in all the time for more content but like I say sign in use the smart things app on your phone and you can make your own artwork or upload your own artwork to use let's try one there so that is pretty cool obviously you can have frames in different colors they often do promos where you get the bezel cheap or for free you go on to I think it's I can't remember now, I'll put the link below, but something like samsungtheframe.com or something, and you buy your frames through that portal there. The magnetic frames, you can have dark wood, white, pink, light wood, and so on. Uh, I'm just gonna press back to come out of there. Back again. I'm gonna go back to normal TV. We'll try a quick movie trailer, so we'll try it as a television. United and strong in the face of external threats. So I'll say credit to Paramount Pictures, this is their content, it's a movie trailer I want to try, Top Gun or Maverick. Jumping the queue if you like uh, at the moment and there's a lot of frustration amongst those countries that uh, and credit to Paramount Pictures, back to live TV. All polio vaccine drops. This contains weakened live virus, which can... Okay, so quick look at the home menu before I go. Press the home button, go to the left. You can see we've got the menu there. We can change other settings or connected devices and multi-view. It'll also give you account details on that icon. Left again. Also above that we've got media and art, so anything to do with the art side, go to the art there, sign in and you can pick or choose your art, subscribe, you get loads of artwork. There we've got the apps, sign into your Samsung account, you can go to the apps and download more apps. Going across Samsung TV Plus, Live TV, Netflix, Prime, iPlayer, ITV, Disney Plus, Apple TV, you can mirror your phone, Android phone, Samsung or iPhone to the TV, Rakuten, Now, YouTube, All4, Alexa, Samsung Health, Internet Browser, Connect to Bluetooth, Wireless, Keyboard and Mouse for basic internet browsing, My5, Plex and you can edit that home screen there, put them in the order you want or remove apps you don't want. Going down, what we've had recently, which is live TV. Tells you a bit of what's on now across there. New and trending stuff from different sources. Free movies. Some featured stuff from Samsung TV Plus, popular on iPlayer, CBeebies, Prime Video, whatever's featured there. Popular movies on Prime Video, new and exciting stuff on Disney Plus. Popular stuff on Disney Plus, what to watch Apple TV, Apple TV again, Rakuten, so featured stuff from different sources basically. So that is pretty much it. Obviously you can put that magnetic bezel on as well, claim yours, whatever colour suits your room. Uh, they do look pretty cool, makes it look like an art frame. Um, as a TV it's actually quite impressive, it's better than previous years. Don't know what exactly the panel is in it, but it looks quite good to me. Um, sounds not bad, you can always add a sound bar if you want to improve on that. And also, there, there's always that bit of a compromise. It's done, so you've got it as an art, piece of art or a painting when it's turned off, and turn it on when you want to watch TV. So, pretty cool. That's all for now. Gosh.